Hey everybody, welcome to Comics with Bueller. As always, I'm Bueller. Today is episode number 70 of the new Coffee and Comic Show. Wow. And I am not alone. I have my good friend Bob. Bob, how are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself, Bueller? I am doing great because today, not only is it episode 70, mm -hmm. but today is officially my two-year anniversary from being on YouTube. That's awesome, man. Come on. Thank you very much. Congratulations, buddy. Two years ago, I decided to press upload mm -hmm. and put my face up there on the YouTube. And here we are today, and my apologies ahead of time. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, it's been a fantastic two years, mm -hmm. and it's beyond my wildest dreams uh, what this channel has done. And uh, all the people I've talked to and met, yourself included, mm -hmm. uh, it's been literally a dream come true. And I'm not putting that mildly. It really is like a dream come true because it changed my life. Mm. And uh, I am looking forward to the years to come. We are sitting now at over 9,000 subscribers. Man. 9,000 people have decided, you know what? I don't mind this guy. I thought that would never happen. I'd be lucky to get maybe five or six people to feel right. that way. But apparently over 9,000 people uh, so far have. And uh, it's, like I said, it's been a fantastic two years. Mm. So much has happened. Uh, this is kind of my stable uh, uh, video series I've done, the coffee video. It's my favorite to do. Mm. It's the one I get to interact with the most people. Sure. And this episode is no exception. So it's it's been a lot of fun, but we're going to go ahead and start off with the coffee that we're drinking. Sure. Because the coffee is brought to you by, of course, the official coffee shop of Comics with Bueller, Mocha Express. Mm -hmm. And I am having a hazelnut latte with no sugar-free sweetener. This guy tried to get me sugar-free sweetener. I tried. I tried. On my two-year anniversary. What kind of... That's horrible. You might think it's horrible, but there is a method behind my madness. I don't know. Because I got that sugar-free sweetener. What does that mean? So this is a cold <laughs> brew from Mocha Express, and it has eggnog, sugar-free sweetener. Eggnog? That's right. Well, you didn't say that part. <laughs> hey, I wanted to surprise you, and you're just like, you know the what? hell with sugar-free sweetener. <laughs> you got to fill me in on everything, just so I'm aware. I would have probably said yes. They had a whole bottle they never even opened that was sitting right there, and I'm like, oh. Anyway, but you turned it down. You turned it down, buddy. Sorry to say. And I got to say, it is really good. I bet it is. <laughs> Thanks for the two-year surprise. <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> Thank you so much. Happy anniversary, man. Thank you. Anyway, this is really good. Yeah. Thank you, Mocha <laughs> Express. They've been uh, kind of a sponsor of the show from very early on, over a year. Yeah. And uh, you know what? Uh, great coffee. I always enjoy going in there and hanging out. We've been there multiple times. Love Just hanging hang out. out there. Mm -hmm. Talk about comics, drink some coffee. I've met a lot of people there and a lot of fellow Pacific Northwest uh, comic collectors have met me there, and we yeah. hung out and talked comics, drank coffee, and so thank you, Mocha Express, for all the support. And uh, I don't have anything to give away from them because they're local, but like right. I've said in the past, if you come into town, let me know. The coffee's on me. We'll go to Mocha Express, have some coffee, and talk about comics. There you go. There you go. Um, since this is my two-year anniversary, and thank you so much for everyone watching, the topic that we're going to cover today is what is your origin story? Yeah. What got you in the comics? This is something we asked last week on the coffee video, and then we also asked it on the preview video that comes out on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. There were hundreds and hundreds of comments, and we picked out about 12 of them. Yeah. It wasn't easy. No, no, not it, at all. It wasn't easy because honestly, I read every one, I commented on every one of them. I was laughing. I was crying. I mean, there were some tear jerkers in there. There were some funny stories. There were some weird stories. Yeah. It is awesome. If you want to go read them, go check them out. They're in the comment section of last week's video. And I honestly think that later today, I'm going to jump on my other channel, Travis T, and read some more of the comments. So if you guys want to follow me over there, probably this evening, I'll read some more. Because with so many, it was so hard to choose. Yeah, there was. But every one of them was just fantastic. Absolutely. So. I really enjoyed reading a lot of them myself. And uh, just, just like you said, I mean, there's so much emotion. And I love hearing people's stories. And it's just a great idea for doing that for the show, your anniversary. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I sat there. And a lot of times there's so many comments I get kind of bogged down. But on this one, I was really like, I can't wait to read the next one. Yeah. And every one was just as good. For so, sure. But these 12 that we picked out, we really enjoy them. 
and we're going to share those in a little bit. But before we get started, I want to talk about something that I kind of mentioned this in the past. And today is the official launch of my Patreon. Yeah. Um, today was supposed to be the day that you first heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, or not unfortunately, but Mike Rogers did some investigating about a month ago. And he found my Patreon, which doesn't really have anything on it. And he signed up for the Patreon. And he was the first. Since then, we have over a dozen people that signed up. Mm -hmm. But today is the official Patreon launch for Comics with Bueller. Uh, I will put a link down below. Now, what's going to be on the Patreon going forward? Um, nothing. I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to put on anything on there that's like, you have to watch. You have to get this to know the scoop. That's not what I'm about. I will do exclusive content for that Patreon for the joy of comics. Yeah. Because I like talking about comics. And that's pretty much what I do all day. Sure. So there'll be content on there and just pretty much me talking about comic books. Pretty much what I do here. You'll mm. probably hear exactly the same thing. Right. But there might be some <laughs> funny things that pop up. You never know. Sure. But uh, here's the Patreon. What it is, there's one tier and it's $4 a month. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's $4 a month because that's the price of one comic book and for all the videos that I've done I think there's we're going close to 500 videos um, if you feel as though the content that we provide and all the um, you know previews and the coffee videos and all the other stuff if you think it's worth the price of one comic book a month then I ask you please support the patreon for comics with Bueller um, it is kind of how we're able to do this. Keep the lights on. Keep the lights on. This is my sole income. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing on YouTube, this is what I do. Bob knows this. Yep. Bob has a real job. I do. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what I do. So if you'd like to support the channel, uh, the Patreon, it's $4 a month. The price of one comic book. Uh, if you think I provide enough value to cover one comic book, please join. I'd appreciate that. We actually have a goal of how many Patreons I'd like to get. Um, eventually, the first goal is 100. Uh, the second goal after that is 500. And uh, I always like to set goals. I think it does uh, help you out in the sure. long run. And uh, if that's uh, possible, I appreciate it. And I thank you so much for taking the time to watch the videos. And if you become a Patreon member, thank you again. At the end of this video, I will run down the names of the Patreon members so far. And uh, there's some really good names on here, along with everyone who watches. Yeah. So it's awesome. Enough about that, mm -hmm. because you're watching this because we're giving crap away. Yes, we are. <laughs> we are giving stuff away, all right? This is the two-year anniversary. It's going to be a long video. I don't care. No. It's my two-year. I can do what I want. Do whatever you it's want. It's my birthday. Yep. Treat yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not treating myself. I'm treating you guys. Come on now. All right? Because we are giving stuff away, and we have four different giveaways. Amazing stuff, too. And let me run down uh, a couple of the giveaways real quick. And the great thing, these giveaways were actually donated to us mm -hmm. from one, uh, the sponsor of the show, uh, Max Pro Supplies. Mm -hmm. um, another uh, donation was from Clara uh, Meath. Uh, she is the artist for Midnight Vista, a book I talk about a lot. Yeah. A huge one is from uh, Shannon Mayer. He actually donated his very first cover he ever did. Wow. That is Legend of Oz Wicked West number seven. This is a copy of that. It's his first cover. It's autographed. It's actually not here yet. <laughs> it's yeah. in the mail. I'll put an image up on screen so you guys can check it out. But this is sent to us by Shannon and also Becky. Uh, they are fans of the show. Mm. Shannon makes some amazing covers. Yes, and we he have does. a bunch that we're going to show. And he's, like I said, he's a fan of the show and he wanted to donate this for the giveaway for our two year anniversary. This comic book looks amazing and I'm honored to be able to give this away. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't stop there mm. because not only are we giving away the Max Pro Supplies, it's $50 price back. That's how much is in there and we'll show you a picture of that. We're also giving away the Midnight Vista uh, issues number two and number five by Clara Meath. She sent those to us for the uh, giveaway as well for the two-year anniversary. And then the Shannon Mayer uh, copy of his very first comic he ever did. The cover looks awesome. Looks amazing. Not only that, but I want to give this away. And this, I don't know if you guys can see this, okay? Maybe I'll just put an image. Yeah, put it right here. You hold that yeah. right there? Mm -hmm. 
This is the Image Partner Signing Event print. These are limited to less than a thousand. Less than a thousand were made. Mm -hmm. Yes. And these were for that very special event that was in our area at I Like Comics in Vancouver. What this is, this is a print with all the different uh, creators that are on here from Image. These are the Image Partners, which include Robert Kirkman, Eric Larson, Eric Stevenson, Mark Silvestri, Jim Valentino, and Todd McFarlane. Those are all autographed on this by those gentlemen. Like I said, autographed by Robert Kirkman, autographed by Eric Larson, autographed by Eric Stevenson, autographed by Mark Silvestri, autographed by Jim Valentino, and autographed by Todd McFarlane. It's right there, somewhere in there. Yep. It's not that, a print. Yeah, it's not, yeah. It's not, these are real, authentic autographs. Oh, we watched them do it. We are giving this away. This is another one of the giveaways. So there are four giveaways. This is one, the Shannon Mayer one, the Clara Myth one, the uh, Max, Max Pro Supplies, a ton of giveaways. So very cool. We'll tell you a little bit later how you enter. It's really easy. Mm -hmm. But, man, I've been talking for a while. Let's go ahead and get into our first five. Yeah, sounds okay. good to me. I'm going to go first. Yeah, go for it. Because I want to show some Shannon Mayer love. Yeah. Because his covers are awesome. So what we do, we show five books each. My first one right here is a Spider-Man number one, the variant Shannon Mayer edition. Mm -hmm. Love it. This is Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy number one. This is actually Bob's book. He's letting me touch it. <laughs> this is another Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy variant by Shannon Mayer number one. Which one is this? Deceased number one, another Shannon Mayer cover. Awesome. And last one I have is Guardians of the Galaxy number one, another Shannon Mayer cover. Look at that goodness right there. Love all those. I mean, he's got a style. He does have he a style. He does have a style. I love his use of color. Uh, I actually have another book of his on the way. Nice. It's the I was a, a, one of the few who were able to get in on that uh, Wonder Woman 750. Very cool. One of my favorite covers that he's done. I can't wait to get it. Very cool. All right, let me see your five. Sure thing. So uh, you guys will see the theme inside of this. I hope you do. Uh, but I got a um, little bullseye. Actually, this is uh, uh, Daredevil. And then we have Elektra. And we got Kingpin. This is all issue number one, connecting covers by Marco Cicchetto. And we got some old man Hawkeye action. And then we got the Thunderbolts number 111. There you go. And you can mostly see mostly Daredevil characters there. Had to go with it. Yeah, he likes Daredevil, <laughs> apparently. That's all right. You got to like something, right? Yeah, you do. There you go. Well, very cool. Those are our first five. We're going to go ahead and jump into our topic that we asked last week, mm -hmm. or the question, which is, what is your origin story? And these are all comments that people have left us. And Bob, you were up first. Sure. Uh, we have Scott uh, Palich. Is that right? Palachek. Palachek. There you Scott go. Scott Palachek. Thank you very much, Scott, for, for leaving this comment. He said, and this is his story. He says, my parents got divorced when I was five, and I spent most of my childhood being raised by my grandparents. Both of my grandmothers realized that I loved to read and started getting me comics to keep me occupied. I live with my father, and I had three different stepmothers. Yeah, dad was a player. <laughs> <laughs> and who took great pleasure in destroying my books. When I went to the Navy, after graduation, number three tossed all my books in the trash. I came home on leave to find what she had done. I went to my room and opened a secret panel I had where some of my favorite books were left. I was so happy to have them, but very upset that I had lost the rest of them. Those four long boxes left with me that day. And by the way, he says that the ones that he threw away is about eight or nine boxes. Mm. Eight or nine long boxes. The ones that he kept, those four long boxes left with me that day and have traveled with me ever since, including two, two, two tours to the Persian Gulf in 88 and 89. I picked up books on and off over the years until 2017. I saw an article with Captain America saying Hail Hydra, and I had to find out what was going on. I picked up the Secret Empire storyline by Nick Spencer, and it pulled me right back into collecting. That storyline and finding channels like Comics with Bueller have reinvigorated my passion and love for collecting. I still have those four long boxes from when I was a kid, and I've added several more. Thanks for all you do, Bueller. That's that, awesome. That is awesome. Not awesome that the stepmom threw away the... <laughs> Threw away his comics. Books. 
But he, for one, he's got a secret panel in his room. I love that. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> you know, who doesn't want a secret, you know, space in the room or panel right. where they can hide their comics? Um, but this is such a great story. Yeah, it and is. And such a great origin. For one, thanks for your service as well. Absolutely. Two tours in the Persian Gulf. That's thank you, awesome. Scott. Um, and thank you so much for the kind words. Um, like a lot of these stories, we start off collecting... We take a break, stuff happens, and then we find ourselves come back into the comics. Absolutely. That is a reoccurring theme in a lot of these uh, stories that we're going to read. Mm -hmm. And it's just awesome. Ah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's part of my story as well. Yeah. So, Scott, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to know if you have any more secret, secret compartments. Panels. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of cool. Yeah. Anyway, this okay. next one is from Anton, and I can't pronounce his last name, so we're going to go with Anton M. And uh, this one goes, my origin story for comics is a very long one, but I will try to give you a brief version of growing up. I couldn't really read very well because I have dyslexia. My grandmother got me into comics by buying it for me. I love Spider-Man. Spider-Man was on the electric company, and he, along with Morgan Freeman, taught me how to read because Spider-Man only talked in word balloons. So through him and them and my grandmother... They exposed me to comic books. I could follow the pictures and eventually she would read uh, to me the word balloons. I wrote a letter to Stan Lee thanking him for all this and he actually wrote me back. Comic books are still a big part of my life and I will keep reading them. Whoever says they are not literature is dead wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I missed a couple lines in here but Anton, thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, Thank you for sharing that. You know, in your first exposure to reading should always be a comic book. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're a kid, why not? You know, why not? If I look at a book and it's just a bunch of words, mm -hmm. okay? When I was young, I had zero interest. But the pictures on the pages popped out and I wanted to read that book. Because right. I wanted to know what got me to the next panel. Sure. And it should be mandatory. I, I think so as well. I mean, my, some of my first books was Cat in the Hat, right? And if we really think about it, that's a comic book. There you go. You know, so I agree. Anton, it's so cool that Stan Lee wrote you back. Oh, my uh, gosh, exactly. I don't know that. if you still have that writing that he wrote back to you, but that would be so cool to have. Um, I never got a chance to meet Stan Lee. I saw him from afar, mm -hmm. uh, and that was about it. I never, ever had a chance to say hello or anything like that. I wish I did, you know, but... Uh, it's obviously not going to happen now. Right, right. But uh, Anton, thank you so much for sharing, my friend. That's a great comment. When I read this, I, I messaged him. I said, can I read this? I'd like to read that because I really like it. So right. thank you, Anton. Uh, Bob, you are up next. Sure thing. Our next one comes from Carlos Vargas. Uh, thank you, Carlos. He said, um, I had just gone to the movies to watch 1989's Batman. I went to work the next day and was talking to a co-worker about it. I told him how much I loved this version of Batman. All I watched before that was the uh, 66 Batman on TV. He told me if I loved this version of Batman, I should read the comics. I told him I thought comics were just for kids and didn't know that they were actually darker. So I went to the comic book shop after work and they recommended The Dark Knight Returns. I was blown away. I came back the next day and bought a bunch of Batman comics and love and the love of comic books began. That is such a great comment. I love that. Uh, this is actually also how Kevin Smith got into comic books. Same yeah. type of thing. Yeah. I, I, I think I said this to Carlos. I don't think that 1989 Batman movie gets enough credit. It doesn't. I think that, for one, I thought it was a great movie. And I think it turned a lot of people into comics. And the simple fact that Carlos' first experience was a Batman Returns mm -hmm. book... That's awesome. It is. It That's is. That's such a good book. <laughs> the Dark Knight Returns was a lot of a lot of comic collectors' bible back then. Oh my god! It's so <laughs> I still have my copy. Yeah, I do too. It looks like it's been through the uh, washing machine. <laughs> I love it. But imagine that being your first experience, and just like, oh, I have a stereotypical feeling about how Batman is, and then you read that book. Right. Wide open, man. Yeah, You're exactly. wide open from there on. Carlos, thank you so much. Love that comment. Uh, the next one is from D. Metz. D. Metz. Mm -hmm. just, just two years ago, my son was struggling with reading in school, third grade. He had no interest in any of the material we gave him to practice his reading skills. 
I had no interest in comics, but another teacher recommended them to help get him into reading. It sparked his interest, and he started to do much better. But the side effect, I love this part, was that I was now hooked. <laughs> his interest had waned, but I am now more into the hobby than anybody. So at age 43, a longtime jock like me is now reading and buying comics like crazy. Thanks for all you do and all the content you both put out there for the comic community. That is <laughs> awesome. So he's buying books for his kid, mm-hmm. trying to get him reading. He's like, man, these look pretty cool. Yep. <laughs> Kids like, I moved on. I got Pokemon or whatever, Game Boy or you know Minecraft, whatever he's playing, Fortnite or something. Fortnite, yeah. But but the dad's like, I still like the book. Yep. So he's still <laughs> buying them. I think that's awesome. Anyway, we can get more collectors. Yeah, for sure. We'll take it. So, but, but it is a testament to the medium, right? Yes. I mean, here, here's something he was trying to, you know, get for his kid, to, you know, to help him out, and ended up finding out just how great they were. Yeah, love it. I like that he said he's a longtime jock and he's now reading comics. I was actually a jock in school. So well. was I. I was wrestling, uh, uh, basketball. You know, I was pretty good at pretty much every sport I tried. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I always liked comics, and none of the other, I mean, none of the other people liked comics. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was literally nobody. And it's it's weird to think that, right? And, and I want to take a minute and kind of share a little personal thing with me. Mm-hmm. I most recently went to a a party about two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was one of my friends' wife. It was her fiftieth birthday uh, mm-hmm. party, and uh, I wanted to go because I haven't seen them in a while, and I knew there'd be a lot of people there that I haven't seen for many years, for like almost twenty years, mm-hmm. and so I went to this party. And sure enough, probably a dozen of my close high school friends and years after, first five years after, were there. And uh, it was so great seeing them. And we talked and we shared stories and they asked me what I was up to and I shared them. And they all said, man, you should have been doing that from the beginning. Because they all remembered how much I enjoyed comic books. Yeah. And how much of a part it was for me. And they're like, man, that's awesome, man. You talked about that all the time. Probably bugged them all the time. <laughs> but I sat there and I had multiple conversations with all these people. The great people. But as much as they couldn't relate to me, I couldn't relate to them either anymore. Mm. I have found that the comic book community and the people I talk to, I just like talking about comics. Yeah, That's the conversation I want to have. I enjoy that conversation. There should be more comic book parties. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? <laughs> you know, I think that would be a lot of fun because we talked about a lot of old times and hanging out and you know what we've been doing. But I really like talking about comics. Let's yeah, just be honest. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But uh, it definitely puts it into perspective when you go back. You know, and you talk to these people who have known you for you know from the very beginning almost, and they remember this thing about you. And now I have an outlet to share it with thousands and thousands of people, and they could they could see how happy I was. Mm -hmm. You know, not that I wasn't happy before. Right. But they could see it. And it was pretty cool. That's awesome. To be able to talk about it and everything. So, for sure. anyway, that kind of brought back that memory when he kind of, about being a jock because we were all playing sports together back then. Right, right. Well, I mean, by by doing something like this, you have a channel, you you reach thousands of people that are part of your tribe. That's right. right? And and so that's how people like you and I got together. And so I think that's just amazing. Very cool. Okay, Bob, you're up next. All right. This is from Scott. We've read Scott's before. Oh, yeah, Scott Thielen. All right, Scott, thanks very much for the comment. Scott says, 1981. He just starts it right off the bat. Here's the year, 1981. I was eight years old, and my best friend showed me his X-Men number 149, and I was hooked. My mom still had the bad stereotypes about comic books from the 50s, but she couldn't deny that it got me to read more and how much I love them. That Christmas, I got a comic collector starter kit from Sears or something. It came with about 30 comics, bags, boards, a price guide, and a short box. Thus began my OCD with comic collecting and preserving the condition of my books. Comics have been a constant companion through many years. <laughs> I wish that there were those comic collector kit starter kits like they had back then. I wish that there was catalogs. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. That was your <laughs> side note. Yeah. The Sears Christmas catalog, the J.C. Penney's Christmas catalogs yes. from the 80s. I was so happy when my mom brought those home. Oh, yeah. 
flipping through those, looking through all the toys and stuff, you know, and then they'd always set up like play sets. Yeah. Like it wouldn't just be like a figure. It'd be like a figure in a background with like a tree and all this stuff, you know. <laughs> it was awesome looking. And I loved it. Yeah. They don't do that anymore. No. There was actually a, a fellow Pacific Northwestern, Knights of Old, he's got a channel. Mm-hmm. He did a video with him and his daughter going through old Christmas catalogs. Really? And it was just just a couple months ago. I watched that from start to finish because he literally just flipped through all the toys. And it was I was like, dude, I remember doing that. Yeah. I missed that so much. <laughs> I remember seeing that collector's uh, thing in the catalogs. I don't remember if it was J.C. Penney's or Sears yeah. or Myron Frank or whatever it was. But I remember seeing those in there. And, man... That print needs to come back. Yeah, it does. It does. Absolutely. Very cool. <laughs> that brings back a lot of memories. Yep. <laughs> All right. Next one I have is from Eric Johnson. And Eric says, hi, Bueller. Hi, Eric. Uh, really enjoy your YouTube channel. Great stuff. I would like to share with you how I got back into collecting comics. I believe it was 2006 or 2007. Let me know. There were these condensed reprints of the original Amazing Spider-Man comics that were in the Sunday paper. My mom back then would save them every single week and would give them to me when I would see her. She didn't miss a single one. She used to give me comics when I was a kid to give me the read. Spider-Man was still my favorite. Well, fast forward to 2014, February 5th, my mom passed away from pneumonia. Then not long after that, I had to move. So after the move, to my new place and start unloading my stuff, I find those comics my mom saved for me. I kept them in great condition. Then I discovered there is an LCS less than a half a mile away from my new place. And now I have long boxes and short boxes full of comics. It's been a fun, awesome hobby and it's got me through some tough times. In memory of my mom, thank you for reading my story. I love that. I love that. Uh, (sighs) That one resonated with me very much. And, um, I mean, that's how I got into comics as well was because of what happened with my mom. And so, um, I know it resonated with you as well. It does. Cause honestly, moms, they're the ones that are buying the kids comics or were buying the kids comics. Majority of the stories I read, my mom got me this book. Yeah. My mom bought me, wanted to help me read. My mom bought me this and comics, like he said, they get you through tough times. The memories that you have associated with these books make a difference. They do. Stories like what Eric Johnson said, there's a lot of stories like that. Yeah. Different variations. But the bottom line is these books that we have, that we cherish, have memories attached to them. Absolutely. That make them more valuable than any dollar amount that you could stick on a book. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure Eric probably feels the same way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break because I want to actually tell you guys how to enter the giveaway. Oh, yeah. And um, and then at the end, we'll mention it as well. So like I said, the giveaway, we have four different giveaways. Let me run down the giveaway real quick. First giveaway is Midnight Vista number two. Actually, here, you want to take those, sure. buddy? Yeah. Okay, Midnight Vista number two, autographed by Clara Myth. And Midnight Vista number five, also autographed by the artist Clara. Very cool. She sent those to us for the giveaway. So that's one of the giveaways. Thank you, Clara. The second giveaway is a $50 prize pack from Max Pro Supplies. A picture will pop up here, show you all the stuff you get. We got some clear backing boards, some dividers, some bags and boards. A whole bunch of cool stuff. So that's the second giveaway. The third giveaway is the Shannon Mayer very first cover he ever did which is the Legend of Oz Wicked West number 7. This was donated from Shannon himself. He is sending this to us. The image is right here. It's autographed. That is for another giveaway. The fourth and final giveaway is the Image Partners signing print that we have signed by all the partners for Image, including Eric Larson, uh, Tom McFarlane, just a ton of names. That's going to be another giveaway. So how do you enter this giveaway to win? Like I said, there's four different prizes. First thing, all you have to do is be subscribed to this channel. Mm -hmm. You probably already are. Uh, Please give me a thumbs up if you don't mind. If you didn't like this video, you can thumbs it down. It's up to you. And also, if you have the ability to share this video, please go ahead and do so. 
all those are on the honor, honor system to be honest. So if you don't do it, I really can't tell. But if you do do it, thank you so much. That's awesome. The second thing you have to do to enter is just leave a comment on the video. Just leave a comment down below. You can say whatever you want. If you want to share your origin story, or if you've already shared your origin story, you could say something else. It's up to you. The third and final thing that you have to do to enter to win these giveaways is you have to subscribe to Everything Comics. That is Bob's channel. I'll put a link at the very end. It'll probably pop up right here. He's got a great channel. I'm on there all the time. Fellow Pacific Northwester. You guys have watched him on the copy videos now for almost more than a dozen episodes. Mm -hmm. Good friend of mine. We're trying to get him to a thousand subscribers. I've told him that we're going to make it happen. <laughs> and so there you go. Just go subscribe to Bob Everything Comics. Now here's the kicker. And this is kind of a really cool thing. The giveaways don't end with what we just said. Yeah. Because when Bob gets to a thousand subscribers, which I think will be sooner than later, mm -hmm. he is doing his own giveaway. Yes, I am. And what do you have for your giveaway when you hit a thousand? I have also another copy of the same print from the Image Corporate signing. Look at that. We've signed. Got, we've got two of these bad boys. <laughs> yes, we do. Signed by all of the uh, uh, creators uh, from Image, and we were there watching them sign each one of those. And it was an awesome day, and these are very rare. Only a thousand, at least, I think less than a thousand, less than a thousand yeah. made. So there you go. That's all you gotta do. Leave a comment, be subscribed to the channel, and then subscribe to Bob's channel, Everything Comics. That's all you have to do to enter these giveaways. And then we're actually gonna give about two weeks before we do the winner. Uh, two weeks from today, on episode 72 of the coffee video, we will announce the four winners of the prizes. And there you go. You can win some great stuff and you really don't have to do nothing. One other thing, and I'm just putting this out there and you don't have to do this. I know a lot of people have made videos for contests and I don't ask people to ever make videos for contests. But if you'd like to make a video talking about your origin story and just sharing that with the community, I think that would be awesome. It would be uh, amazing. Take the time to do it. Put it out there. You'd be surprised by the response you'll get from the community because we are very supportive of one another. And if you do uh, make a video, please let me know in the comments. Just put a link on there. I'd love to check it out. So if you ever thought about making a comic book video, this is a good place to start with your origin story. And uh, take a few minutes and do so. I think that would be pretty cool. Absolutely. So there you go. That's how you enter the contest. I'll run through them again at the end of the video. And I'll show you all the prizes and stuff. And... Uh, but it's pretty cool. It's really, really easy to enter. Absolutely. All right. So, Bob, you are up next with the next comment. This is from uh, Christian, I believe. Christian Ramirez. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Christian. He says, he said, it sets the tone right here. The year is 2004. <laughs> I was eight years old, and I loved the movies and TV shows with Batman and a few other superhero types, but mostly Batman. One, One day I was in school. We go to the library for our normal required reading, and they are getting a ton of new books to replace the old ones. The librarian told us we could keep any of the old books we wanted as she pointed to the pile of old books. Eight-year-old me hated reading, so no thank you. But, my, but then it caught my eye. Up on the top shelf is a beat-up copy of Action Comics number 812. This futuristic Superman on a motorcycle. How badass is that? <laughs> I took it home and fell in love. I asked my parents for more, and what do I learn? My stepdad has a stockpile in the basement from his collecting days, which he amazingly gave to me. That's an awesome stepdad. Then I went from one comic to a full collection overnight. His collection was mostly DC and Image. I'm so lucky to have gotten in this way. <laughs> I love it. So, let me just... Christian says his stepdad... Gives him a bunch of com comic books. In the earlier comment, a stepmom threw away <laughs> eight or nine boxes of comics. Right. This stepdad, thumbs up to that thumbs guy. Thumbs up. Know? Absolutely. That's awesome. But how would you like to go from one comic? Oh, yeah, I got some in the basement. All of a sudden, you got a nice collection. I would love it. That's, I mean, that's a nice way to start collecting books. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Very and thumbs cool. up again to that dad for not saying, no, these are my books, or I, they're holding value to me. Yeah. To give him the collection is just, I just love that. That's awesome, yeah. And like I said, stepmoms to throw them away, bad. Stepdads <laughs> to give you comics, good. Good. There you go. There you go. All right, this next one is from Walter uh, Cahill. 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 
Growing up in Dover, New Jersey, in the 70s and 80s, we were really poor. Dad flew the coop, and my mom was doing the best she could to raise four boys. Never got any extravagant presents. I was just happy to have clothes and food and a roof over my head. Once a month, we would wait for the mailman to arrive with our welfare check so we could rush down to the bank and cash it. My mom would always give us a little bit of money, though, and I would either go to the arcade or down to the local corner store and check out which comic books were there. I love Thor, The Avengers, and Spider-Man, so I've been loving all these Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. I was a loner in high school. Poor, long hair, old clothes, acne, so basically I had no friends and certainly no girlfriends. I switched high schools after my freshman year and had to take the bus back and forth to school. In the afternoon, I remember going to the library to hang out and wait for the bus home. I always had a comic book or two with me to help pass the time. I would read them or draw, trying to copy the cover as best as I could. This was really my escape from reality and helped to keep me sane. Comics took my mind off of the problems that I was going through and gave me a way to escape the real world and visit a world full of heroes and amazing stories. That's why I love comics so much, even at the ripe age of 49. Wow. That wow. is such... That hits so many people on so many levels. Absolutely. I can relate to a few things in there. Mm -hmm. A lot of things, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um... And a lot of things were kind of hidden, I guess you'd say. I mentioned before my friends that I had in high school that I just recently reconnected with. Mm -hmm. I would always talk about comics with them. They didn't have any interest. So I felt like I was talking to a wall. Right. And I think there was only like one guy. His name was Jonathan Langford. He liked comics. I moved away. And when I moved away, I think it was around like, uh, like sixth grade, there was nobody that he was the last one I remember that was really in the comic books. So that part of me that I got to share with him was gone. Yeah. And like I said, talking with my other friends, they just, they just they didn't care. It wasn't they're like, what are you talking about? Now I was into sports and other stuff. So I had other hobbies, but my one and true love was comics because of what he referenced in here, the problems that you're going through at home or some of the things that, you know, People might look at you a certain way. It's escapism. It is. You can read these stories and you can find this magical world. And I'm not, I'm not trying to be like exaggerating, exaggerating or nothing. It is. It is. It literally is. These are wonderful stories that creators have come up with and put pen to paper and made them come alive. Yeah. And people love that. Love the books. To this day, I'm 44 years old. I have more respect for comic book creators and artists than I ever have before. Not because of a value of a book, right? but because of stuff like this and stuff like this that it's able to do to a, certain, to a single person. Absolutely. You know, for, for myself in, in my experience, I mean, you know, I've, I've posted my origin story, but one of the things that is not on there is I grew up in a very tough neighborhood. I grew up in, in Venice Beach, California. I grew up in, you know, a, a gang atmosphere, uh, you know, the, the whole skateboarding culture. And, uh, you, you know, you just did. I was a closet comic book reader. Right. Even though they touched me in such a great way, they were my escapism. Well, one of the other things about them is they were the only moral compass I had at the time. Uh, you know, understanding what is right for wrong, loyalty, you know, all, all these different type of things that go into, you know, what make a good person uh, in the midst of all this bad stuff that was going on. And so even though I wasn't like you where I was fully talking about it all the time, uh, they, they were what grounded me. Yeah. You know, they were my escapes, escapism, but they did so much more for me as well at the time when it's very difficult growing up when you're a teenager. And so, you know, this type of thing, uh, you know, inside of this story, you know, he, he explains it so well. And we can both resonate with a yeah. lot of different things he says inside of there. Uh, but, all, you know, there are places that they touch us that I think are far more reaching than we ever understood, oh, yeah. Back, yeah. at least back then. Yeah. I think a lot of it, you know, I go back and I collected sports cards. Mm -hmm. And I collected uh, sports cards and, and comic books were my thing. I wasn't emotionally attached to the sports cards at all. Even no. though I collected them and kind of put them in the same category. There was no emotional attachment to them. No. You know, but the comic books did. Yeah. 
And uh, I, I don't care if I never get another sports card again, but I sure would like some more comics. Come on now. <laughs> 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 All right, you're up next. Uh, House Till the End has a nice long comment for you to read. I appreciate that, <laughs> as always. <laughs> All right, House Till the End, thank you very much for the comment. He says, my story is as follows. I was really more of a TV kid growing up. Watched shows like the Adam West Batman, Kimba the White Lion, Herculoid, Space Ghost, Johnny Quest, Moby Dick, The Mighty, Mitor, and Underdog. I didn't get into comics until my 20s. Because of a friend of mine, it gave me a copy of his number one Wolverine, the limited series by Claremont and Miller, along with an issue number one of The Question. From that point on, I was hooked. And it was the perfect time to get into comics. You had Dark Knight Returns, Watchmen, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Yosagi Ojimbo, Cerebus, Mage, Grendel, The Crow, Junk Waffle, Cheech Wizard. Uh, these last two were more underground titles, <laughs> titles but just to name a few. Yeah. <laughs> then the 90s hit, and we all know what happened then. I was out of comics. The crash was not the only reason, uh, but one, that many le- one of the many that led to it. Fast forward through a few girlfriends, a lot of partying, <laughs> marriage, a divorce, and my mother passing away. That you find yourself in front of a television, watching YouTube and typing, how's the comic book business doing? And if you know YouTube, that rabbit hole gets long and deep very quickly. Yep. And now two years later, I find myself back into comics after almost 20 plus years of not picking up a single issue in that time span and still watching YouTube and glad that I was able to find a channel like Comics with Bueller. Travis, it was your enthusiasm, sense of humor, and the fact you wore your heart on your sleeve and let us in when your roommate passed away, and that kept me coming back to watch your channel. You kept it real, brother. Congrats on all your success. Here's to many more years ahead. You you keep being jacked up on coffee, and we'll keep watching. Take care. That's awesome. <laughs> That's uh, a great comment. House until the end, thank you so much. Um, he mentioned my roommate who passed away, and that, that was Sean. And uh, a lot of people don't know this story because there's a lot of new subscribers mm-hmm. uh, to the channel. Um, I obviously I always wear the vest, mm-hmm. and this vest was actually given to me from Sean, uh, who was my roommate with me for over three years. Mm-hmm. Uh, lovely lady, a good friend. We always talked about. Uh, what I was doing in the videos, and it's been a little over a year now since she passed away. Mm. But I never te- told anyone that she's the one who gave me this vest. It's kind of my trademark, let's just be honest. Mm-hmm. Until I, she passed away, and I made like a tribute video to her. Um, I used to write names on the back of the vest of people who would super chat. Sure. And uh, after she passed, I stopped doing that. Mm-hmm. And the last name I've written on the vest is her name. And it's just kind of a nice way to remember her and the fact that people remember her means a lot. Yeah. So thank you, House, till the end for getting me all teary eyed, <laughs> man. Uh, but I really appreciate you taking the time to recognize her, Sean. And, uh, you know, even though she has passed over a year ago, I think about her quite a bit. Yeah. So thank you. Okay, let's move on. I can't take it. Go Understand. On. Uh, it's not on the next one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Uh, this next one is William O. William O. Okay, here we go. Uh, it says, Hi, Beeler. I'm writing my introduction to comic books. It started for me around the age of seven. I grew up in the home where English wasn't spoken at home. So you can only imagine how difficult it was for me to go to school. I basically learned how to speak English by watching TV as a kid. I'd watch H&R Puff and Stuff, yeah. uh, Wonder Rama, and Bozo the Clown. My early years in school were pure torture, being that kid who was considered the weird one. Then I discovered Batman, the series with Adam West and Burt Ward, which made me discover DC Comics. I started reading DC books, and a friend of mine introduced me to Marvel. So I saw the covers of these comic books with all the colors and action and that made me want to learn how to read even more because I wanted to know what was going on in these books with all the characters. And also I discovered a friend in the Spider-Man character, Peter Parker, because he was like me, always being picked on and laughed at by the other students in school. 
So needless to say, the comic books in the Batman series and Superman series helped me a lot. It taught me to be honest and strive to be a better and also to see the good in people. I still collect and probably will all my life. Thanks for sharing your thoughts on YouTube and keeping it entertaining. Thanks, Will. He mentioned some things that you mentioned. Mm. It helped him to be honest. Yes. You know, and it created his character, you know. He related to Spider-Man. Spider-Man was Peter Parker, that is. Right. Was picked on and stuff like that, you know. And he could see himself in that. Marvel did such a great job with that. Absolutely. That's one of the strongest points about Marvel books back in the day, was that the characters, you could relate to them. And they made a point to make it so. Absolutely. That was Stan Lee's goal, was to make you relate to these characters on a personal level, not including all their powers and all the stuff they can do, sure. but what they can't do. Absolutely. No, that you're, you 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 make a great point. I mean, you know the the the, the reason why pe people have been able to resonate with Peter Parker so much is because of the all, all the humanism that is inside of those, the flaws, yeah. uh, you know, all the trials that he goes through, and the angst of all the emotional stuff that you know a person goes through as a kid. You know, trying to get your first job, trying to make money, while at the same yep. time having the responsibility of all this stuff, and uh, you know, comic books again were a moral compass for me and I know that they were for a lot of other people yeah we got one last comment to go you got it absolutely this one is from Billy Meadows Billy thank you my comic origin he said it all started with me watching Batman the animated series every evening at 6 and 6 30 back to backs I always knew comics existed but never knew how to access them one day I was driving through town and I was maybe about eight years old uh, my dad drove past a sign that said, Bob's Comet Castle. I wish that was my castle <laughs> here in Muncie, Indiana. Uh, I immediately told my dad, look, comic books. He pulled in the lot, and I walked in the store, which was around November 2003. The smell hit my nose, and I fell in love. That comic book smell. Yep. I didn't know what I was looking for or knew what issue numbers meant. I just knew I loved Batman. I'm digging through the back issues and whatnot, and I remember making my way to the new books. I picked up a book that had zombies in it, and the pages were black and white, and my dad said, maybe when you're a little older. <laughs> that book was Walking Dead number one. <laughs> come on, so, Dad. Come on, I know. So I sat it down, not thinking about it, and bought $5 worth of Batman, Spider-Man, and Daredevil back issues. Way to go, dude. Uh, ever since that day, I am... 25 now and I've been going to the same shop haven't missed a new comic book day since 2007 thanks guys <laughs> so he had Walking Dead number one in his hand in his hand yeah, like, ah, you don't need that that's not really worth nothing yeah yeah you don't need a bag and board for that uh huh <laughs> no, that's <but> funny <laughs> <laughs> but what's funny about that I mean how many books have we had go through our hands that later on we, we found out we're all the time I know all, all the time, time. right I, I, well, so what I've held and what I've owned right two different things two different things yeah, exactly so, right uh, but Billy that's an awesome thing you know uh, I'm it's very cool. Your dad pulled over, you know, made the made the change. Says, okay, we'll go to it. Yeah. Thing. You you had the eyes. You saw the store. He told your dad. He took you to that shop, and you've been a fan ever since. You mentioned the comic book smell. Right. Now there's two two different comic book smells. There's the bo smell. <laughs> yep. <laughs> which is there. Come on. It and is. And then there's the actual comic book smell. Yes. And the comic book smell is, you'll never forget it. Never. Now, the mixture of the two is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But the actual comic book smell, there is a yeah, smell to there it. There is a you smell know, to and, it. And uh, you'll know it right away when you when you smell it type thing. For sure. But uh, such a great thing. And it's so nice. I mean, here, uh, he's not, he's only 25 years old, you know, and uh, in the comics, you know, he just started a few years back and still has the joy, you know, from when he was younger. He still loves it. You know? Yeah. And... Uh, when you start this time and you keep going, if I were to keep going at 20, 25 was about when I was totally done. Mm -hmm. If I would have kept going from 25 to where I am now, that's 20 years of comic books. Yeah, more exactly. Collection. So, uh, Billy, don't uh, don't take any breaks, man. No. A lot of us do. <laughs> uh, take a little break every now and then, you know, don't don't, don't spend all your money. Right, but, right. But, uh, you know what, you know, before you know it, you're 45 years old, 44, 68. 
So you what? Know, <laughs> you know, you got a whole garage full of books. This so. is true. This is true. Very cool. And for most people out there, they, they look forward to Friday. People who are into comics, we got two days a week. We got New Comic Book Day and Friday. There you so go. So I love it. Very much so. Well, those are all the comments that we wanted to read. Like I said, there was so many. Uh, yeah. Well over yeah. 100 comments. A couple hundred, you know. I respond to everyone. There's probably going to be more put on the video. I'm going to do my best to go back and respond to those as well. Mm -hmm. Just because the video will probably be seen even after this one. But uh, such great... I love the fact people took the time to write detailed examples yes. of their origin thing. And I appreciate your guys' time. I really do. I don't take it for granted that you... For one, give me the time to uh, you watch the video. And two, you give me the time to comment... And let me know about, you know, your thoughts or how you got into comics. I believe this type of storytelling is, it's timeless. It's priceless. it's priceless. I love reading this stuff. I will go back and read this stuff again a year from now. Absolutely. And just to cheer me up. Yeah. You know, unless, unless it's the one by House to the End and make me cry. I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> what, what are you doing to me, man? Uh, but anyway, those are all the great comments. Like I said, I'm going to jump on my other channel Travis T later today and read some more of the comments just because there was so many and I'm not going to run out so right. I figure I might as well do so and just kind of talk about it but uh, what do you think of all these comments? Uh, I mean really touching you know I, I got a chance to go through a lot of them last night and uh, you know I loved hearing all of your stories um, you know and, and there's some you know some that I resonated with but just like you I, yeah. I laughed some of them brought me to tears. Others was like, oh, yeah, I remember that time and that, that period. And it was just so great just getting to kind of know all of you through these original yeah. stories. There was a few comments that were sent to me directly to my email. Mm -hmm. There's no way I could read them. There's no <laughs> way I could get through reading them. They were, I, I'm a sensitive dude. And mm -hmm. I was like, it was like a roller coaster of emotion. Oh, they were wonderful. But there's no way I can read them out loud <laughs> and get through it, man. I mean, it was just, just I mean, Hero and the Kid sent me one. Give me a break. I couldn't do it. Oh, my word. I told him, I said, you should have warned me ahead of time. <laughs> it was so good. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and jump to our final five. Yeah. And then after that, we'll kind of go over some final stuff. So final five, we'll go ahead and let you go first there, Bob. Awesome. And uh, these ones I brought are just variant covers for a lot of the independent comics that I'm liking right now. Uh, the first one is Folklords. Uh, everybody knows how much Bueller and I both love that title. Uh, the next one is a variant cover for The Red Mother, uh, which has also been just an amazing book. Uh, one of our favorite uh, yes. titles right now is Something is Killing the Children, and uh, there's that one. Uh, I couldn't do this without giving you some Spawn. Here's a Spawn variant cover from 300 that was released not that long ago. And then one of my newer favorite books that was just released is a variant cover for the kids from a Blaze Comics. That's awesome. There you go. There's my final five. You got another couple copies of that kids one. I do. I do. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very cool. I'll take those off. All right. Sure I'm, I'm kind of going a little bit more old school with mine. Yeah. Uh, I have X-Men number 16. This is my earliest copy of X-Men book. This was actually sent to me a while back from Steve Whiting. Oh, love it. That's pretty cool. One of my favorite books in my collection, Amazing Spider-Man number 100, one of my favorite covers. That's hard to get Yeah, a nice cover for Love sure. Love it. Uh, the Punisher number one from the four-part or five-part miniseries, they extended it. Or actually, you know what? It was always supposed to be five parts, so they just misprinted them all. Oh, really? That's what it was, yeah. Interesting. Punisher, awesome. And then I got, sticking with Punisher, this was sent to me from Derek, my good buddy Derek, uh, what if the Punisher had killed Spider-Man and it's autographed by Derek and the artist, I believe. And then the last one I have is the real deal. Amazing Spider-Man number 129, first appearance of the Punisher. Look at that. And that's also autographed by uh, Jerry Conway. Nice. So very cool. So those are five of my uh, very awesome books that I have. This is one of my favorites. That was a gift as well. Right. The Spider-Man one and uh, my nephew... Uh, Grant gave it to me for a gift. That's awesome. So Great final five, cool. man. Yeah, I can't complain. But better, <laughs> better than yours. Yes, very <laughs> much so. Very much so. To, to each their own, I guess. <laughs> All right, so that's our final five. Let's go ahead and get to, we're going to run down the, the contest again, and I'll tell you about the Patreons. And I just want to give a, a thanks uh, for the for everything. So 
One more time, the giveaway. We have four giveaways. We have the first giveaway is the Midnight Vistas, and we'll show these. Midnight Vista number five, and Midnight Vista number two, one of my favorite series. That's why I wanted to give these away, and these are actually sent to us by the artist. She autographed them, so that's one of the giveaways. The second giveaway is a $50 price back from Max Pro Supplies. We'll put a picture up here so you can see what you're getting. Some clear backing boards. Those are awesome. I just gave you some of those. Yes, those are awesome. Some dividers, some bags and boards, a whole bunch of good stuff. The third giveaway is the Shannon Mayer. Uh, very first cover he ever did, which is the Legend of Oz Wicked West number seven. That was sent to us from Shannon and Becky. They are fans of the show. They wanted to send us something. It's not here yet. It'll be here today. We'll actually show it next week on this video so you guys can see what it is. It's awesome. I'm very excited. But we're putting the image up there so you can check it out. And then the fourth and final giveaway is the Image Partners print with all the autographs from people like uh, Jim Valentino, Robert Kirkman, Eric Larson, Eric Stevenson, Mark Silvestri, and none other than Todd McFarlane. And we'll just show it right there. If you guys can see it, we'll probably have a picture on screen so you can see it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But uh, four different giveaways. Amazing stuff, man. All you have to do to enter is leave a comment down below on this video. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to Bob's channel, Everything Comics. We'll put a link above and we'll put a link at the very end. There's also a link of his uh, channel in the description of this video. So please subscribe to Bob. And also like, comment, share, all that stuff. That's all in the honor system, really. I don't really know if you like the video or not. I can't really tell. But uh, I'll take your word for it. But anyway, easy giveaway to enter. In two weeks on episode 72, we will announce the winners. Another part of the giveaway is Bob is working his way to 1,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. When Bob hits 1,000 subscribers, he is doing his own giveaway of the Image Comics Partners print. He has a copy of it as well. Yep. And that will be part of his giveaway. He might give away more. I don't know. I'm but, planning uh, on it. We'll see. Plan on it. There you go. <laughs> but he'll get to a thousand before he knows it. So you'll have two opportunities to win that print. If you don't win this one, when he hits a thousand, you'll get a second opportunity to win the print. I think that's pretty cool. Amazing. And thank you very much. I appreciate it. Very nice. Um, let's go ahead and move to the Patreons. Like I said at the beginning, that today is the official launch of the Patreon. I just want to run down the members so far. Uh, we have Giuseppe F. We have Bub's Comics, that's an awesome channel. He's a, a Patreon member. Two Brothers Comics, another awesome channel. They're yeah. doing a great job. They just came onto the scene. Um, Reggie Simmons, that's double G Reggie Simmons. Uh, Brett F, uh, Speedy Showcase of Comics, that's Comic uh, Comic Ron, thank you so much. Adam D, Jose A, Zach K, John M, Damien, who I didn't realize was Sleepy Reader 666 until he told me yesterday so I'm, I didn't know it was him or not ah. so thank you Damien uh, Robert the comic book G-Spot Galvin Pete C and of course the very first person uh, Mike Rogers my very first Patreon thank you so much to all these people who have joined like I said if you want to join the Patreon it's open right now it's four dollars a month for the tier it's the price of one comic book a month if you want to help support the channel and maybe we can do more videos get better equipment all that stuff and keep the lights on I would very much appreciate it. We do have a goal, and we're on our way to hitting that goal for that as well. So Absolutely. Very cool. Um, real quick, two years. Two years, man. Two years on YouTube. Almost 500 videos. I've got to meet uh, legends of the industry. I've mm -hmm. got to know them. Um, none of that would happen without the people watching right now. Absolutely. And there's not a day that goes by that I don't remember that. And, uh, you know, I talked about you guys giving me your time. And it's very, it means a lot to me that you do so. Mm. And I am trying to do my best to do my best and uh, for you guys. I take a lot of pride in this channel. I take a lot of the pride in the stuff I put out. I want to represent it in a good way because I feel as though this channel in somewhat represents the pure joy of comic books absolutely and uh that's what this channel is about and that's what i think about every time i make a video that's about what i think when i'm talking with people and uh, like i said because of you guys you guys have given the success that this channel has found 
it's gotten the recognition from people inside the industry have taken notice and we're able to do a lot more things than we could have a couple years ago and really that's because of you guys so thank you so much to the 9,000 plus people who have hit that subscribe button to the almost million times that people have viewed our videos so far um, I'm gonna steal a line from my good friend comic Tom we're just getting started come on and uh, <laughs> I'm pretty excited and by the way um, I want to say congratulations to comic Tom for his two-year anniversary which was two days ago congrats Tom and not to mention that Reggie Simmons or Reggie collects his two-year anniversary of comic book uh, videos is two days from now so wow. on Wednesday so literally within a uh, week period Washington gets Comic Tom, Oregon gets Comic Book Bueller, and California gets uh, Reggie Collects. The West Coast came hard two yeah, years ago, yeah, they man. They did. <laughs> and uh, we're making a statement two years later, we're still doing it. So yeah. it's pretty awesome. So thank you, everybody. Congratulations to those guys for putting out just some great content. There's so many good channels out there um, Jim's Comics, uh, Economics and Comics, your channel uh, simple man's comics a bunch of the channels i mentioned on the video i put out last week mm -hmm. there's a little something for everybody absolutely and it's a great time to be a collector it's a great time to be watching comic book youtube videos for sure because you'll find something that you like no matter what so absolutely that's all i have to say man anything you want to say tell them about your channel a little bit well first of all before i do that i just want to say a hearty congratulations on your two years, uh, you know, getting into watching comic book videos on YouTube uh, has changed the game as far as collecting goes. I think it's made it so much more fun. Uh, it's connected me to a lot of people that I never would have been connected to before. That's how I met you. And uh, I got to say, this this last year has just been amazing just because of that. So thank you very much for all that you do, man. I enjoy uh, it. And uh, my, my channel, Everything Comics, right now I do have a coffee uh, video myself, which drops every Saturday morning. Sometimes Bueller's on there. We do some, have some more shows that are going to be coming out uh, later. We'll be rolling those out and let you know when they're happening. You don't want to talk about them unless you know we can actually get them done. Uh, and that's what we're working on right now. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Really appreciate your guys' support. Uh, Everything Comics, leave me a like and subscribe and uh, enter into the contest because we're going to be giving away some great stuff. That's awesome, man. We just did a roundtable video a couple days ago with the fellow Pacific Northwest comic collectors, myself, Bob, uh, Sam from Sam Stangle Web, and Damien from Sleepy Reader 666. Yep. That was a lot of fun. That was on your channel. You guys can go check it out. Absolutely. It was about two hours of pure comic nerdom. Right. Going. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun. You can find well, out from the Pacific West, if you're talking about the Pacific Sorry, the Portland Comics crew. He doesn't even know the name. <laughs> I don't know the name. He wanted to come up with a name. He doesn't even know it. Give me a it's, break. It's growing on me. But you can find out from the Portland Comics crew who their top five villains of all time are. It was a lot of fun when we had our discussion. So it was check fun. it out. It was a good time. We're looking uh, to doing that video series uh, around once a month, once every five or six weeks, something like that. Yeah. And we're just rotating through our channel. So next one will either be on Sam Sam the Web or a Sleepy Reader's channel. Yeah. And then eventually it'll rotate back around to me, then you, and so on and so on. So right. it's a good series. It's a lot of fun. It's up to the host to come up with a topic. And his topic, like you said, was your top five villains. So yeah. good times. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. This has been an amazing two years. This has been an amazingly long video. But I don't care. Don't care. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. I'm looking forward to reading your comments down below. Don't forget to enter so you can win these great prizes. We will see you in two weeks to give away the prizes. But, of course, I always have a ton of videos in between now and then. So I'll keep you updated as time goes on. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You know what to do. I'll see you next time. And Bob will see you next time. Bye.